Good morning, everyone. Um, great to have all of you join us uh, this bright and sunny, very warm morning in June. Um, thank you for attending our uh, annual trade show uh, for MobileLinks. Uh, the purpose of this trade show is to uh, connect uh, vendors and small businesses as a networking opportunity to meet um, various um, uh, organizations that are working in and around the Peel area uh, and uh, hopefully discuss some various business opportunities uh, surrounding the Here Ontario LRT that we're constructing. So, let's see, will we go straight to the uh, presentation? Um, to start off the presentation, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, MobileLinks. So MobileLinks is the, um, the organization that's uh, been awarded the contract back in October 2019 to design, build, operate, finance, and maintain the construction of the Here Ontario LRT. We advance to the next slide. So uh, just to start off today's uh, workshop and trade show, I'd like to give a um, just a brief overview of some of the works that we're doing uh, uh, to construct the Here Ontario LRT. So for those who don't know, the Here Ontario LRT, um, which has recently been uh, named the Hazel, Hazel McCallion Line, uh, will be an 18 kilometer, 19 stop light rail service connecting people from Port Credit Go Station in the south of Mississauga to the Brampton Gateway Terminal uh, in the north. Uh, Infrastructure Ontario and Metrolink have contracted MobileLink, as I just mentioned, uh, the Here Ontario General Partnership to design, build, finance, operate, and maintain the Here Ontario LRT project for a 30-year term. Now, I'll just get into a bit of the activity that's been going on uh, in and around the corridor to make this project happen and bring it to fruition. So the Here Ontario LRT construction, just to provide an update of the work that have been going on so far, for any of you who have driven along Here Ontario can see that it's quite a busy uh, corridor in terms of construction. Uh, construction activities um, include roadworks, uh, which involve road widening in Mississauga North, uh, tree removals at various locations in order to uh, make way for road widening. Uh, the installation of streetlights and um, in Mississauga North specifically, and I'm talking about the areas between Matheson, uh, Matheson and uh, Bristol and, uh, uh, sorry, Matheson, Britannia and further up all the way to the 407, uh, crews have begun construction of the guideway in the center of here, Ontario. And I believe we'll talk about uh, some of the utility relocations that are a part of these activities in order to get to the guideway construction. And in order to do the road widening, uh, there's various buried utilities within the roadway along here, Ontario. So to accommodate this road widening and the construction of the LRT in the center, uh, many of these utilities need to be relocated and upgraded. So we divide utilities into two parts, wet utilities and dry utilities. Wet utilities uh, mean water main installation, uh, sewage and sanitary, and storm system infrastructure. Uh, a lot of water main activities have been, uh, or wet utilities rather, have been occurring throughout the entire corridor um, in Mississauga South, Cooksville, and Brampton South. Uh, utility relocations um, are about to begin in Brampton South, but they're uh, in full force uh, throughout the rest, rest of the corridor. Sanitary installation is ongoing in Cooksville, storm installations in Cooksville and Mississauga Center in North. And as for dry utilities, what that entails are a lot of the electrical infrastructure um, uh, that supply power to adjacent properties, such as the Electra infrastructure, telecommunications such as Bell and Rogers. So dry utilities typically follow the wet, wet utilities in terms of relocation along the corridor. Um, and it includes duct bank installations uh, to have the cables buried along the roadway in Mississauga North, um, Eglinton to 407, Cooksville, and Mississauga South. Uh, aerial uh, connections are also included in the dry utilities when we install new uh, electrical poles along the corridor. Those uh, aerial cables are also being installed. And as I mentioned, as well as telecommunications. So some of the Bell fiber optic infrastructure uh, is also being located as a part of this, uh, this work. next slide. 
And uh, in terms of structures, so I mentioned roadworks, uh, utilities, and structures. So to, in order to bring this LRT to life, um, various structures are being built, uh, work along the 401 in order to uh, make the 401 uh, ready to accommodate the increased traffic uh, and the uh, weight of the LRT. Uh, work has been going on there uh, at Mary Fix Creek in the south and Fort Credit Go Station. Uh, work has been ongoing to um, reconstruct the uh, channel and build up higher flood walls at the creek. And this is designed to help mitigate against a 100-year uh, storm event. Um, elevated guideway construction has begun. So when we're in Mississauga Center along Rathburn, uh, the LRT uh, veers off of here, Ontario, into the Mississauga City Transit Terminal uh, to service that multimodal uh, transit connection there. So this elevated guideway is under construction. Uh, currently, uh, crews are uh, building the abutments and piers there. And the Lakeshore West structure. So again, in Port Credit in the south, um, there is an underpass. Port Credited, by the way, is the only underground uh, station along this 18-kilometer uh, alignment. Uh, and in order to get there, uh, LR light rail vehicles must pass underneath the active CN rail tracks where the uh, Go, Go Transit Lakeshore West Line operates. And uh, what we've been doing there is we've been building a structure, um, which we call a push box, that actually, once it's uh, constructed, it, it serves as the actual underpass for the LRVs to pass underneath the rail corridor into the Port Credit Station. And this push box is, is a, a, a new type of methodology that's used where we construct the box first, the tunnel, um, the underpass first, and we use hydraulic jacks to then push the tunnel closer and closer to the railway corridor as uh, machinery excavates underneath the tunnel. And this is done in order to um, expedite the process and also to minimize disruption so that railway service continues overhead without uh, having to close down the tracks and uh, do an open cut excavation. All right. And uh, in terms of another major structure, uh, we're on track to complete the operations, maintenance and storage facility. This storage facility will house the um, light rail vehicles, will maintain them. Uh, um, they're, they're, it, it's located just south of the 407 on the border of Brampton and Mississauga, and it'll be the hub of uh, the Hare Ontario line, or in other words, as I mentioned, the Hazel McCallion line. And this is where the light rail vehicles will be inspected, maintained, cleaned, and stored once the LRT is in operation. So in, in addition to this, another milestone that we hit this year is we started installing actual tracks at the uh, OMSF, which you can see in the picture on the right. Uh, within that picture, it's just to the left, uh, the tracks that are being installed. So that's just some of the beginning of uh, the works that are happening there. And as I mentioned, the OMSF is on track to be completed uh, this year. Okay. And uh, at this point, I would like to introduce uh, my colleague and uh, co-host and moderator. Uh, his name is John Wright. Uh, he works with uh, Eagle Flight. He is the president of leadership development. Uh, and Eagle Flight is a global organizational development training company based out of Guelph. Uh, since 1988, the Eagle Flight team has been supporting organizations all over the world with their people development needs from leadership development to culture and from customer centricity to vision, uh, values, competencies, the Eagle's Flight team supports engagement and learning. For the last two years, Eagle's Flight has been working very closely with MobileLink uh, project and they've been uh, bringing to MobileLink a uh, project collaboration module that is designed to support high level uh, the high level collaboration needs of the organization in order to um, ensure that uh, uh, we're, we're all working as one cohesive team and uh, learning together uh, to deliver this exciting new project. So without further ado, let me uh, bring in John Wright. Thanks, Raul. I appreciate that. Welcome, everybody. We're glad that you're here. And uh, we're just waiting on our next speaker, Jose, but I was just wondering, does anybody have any questions for Raul? I think there's a lot of exciting things that are going on within the project there. And is there any questions that anybody would like to have for Raul? 
If you do have questions, there's a couple ways you can answer those. There's, uh, you'll notice on the bottom of your toolbar, there's a Q&A section. So you can pop in a question there for Brawl to answer, or you could on the reactions button, you could raise your hand that will pop you up here onto the, to the screen and, uh, and you can ask a question uh, directly to him. But just out of curiosity, oh, we do have one uh, question here. We have one that says, what's the expected go live date for the LRT uh, role? Maybe you could uh, delve into that a little bit. Yeah, so substantial completion is supposed to be uh, towards the end of the year in 2024. Excellent. Yeah, so we're very excited. So thank you for that. Thanks, uh, and Stephanie is also typing the answer in there. So that's great. Uh, any any other questions for Roll? Do you have someone that's uh, raised the hand, I believe? So I see a question in the chat. Uh, oh, I, uh, it was too long to type. <laughs> yes, we, we do have one in the chat. I just said it aloud. Um, Roll, thanks for the presentation. Just, um, oh, it's Ann Jameson, by the way, from United Way. Um, just in terms of procurement, for procurement um, to help us with our thinking around procurement, what percent of um, of the of the um, project is completed at this point? Is it half? Is it a third? Is it like a, approximately what percent? And and I re I ask that because I want to understand how much more there is to go in terms of purchasing and, and hiring as well. Right, that's a great question. Um, unfortunately, I do not have an exact percent in front of me. Uh, however, um, if I break down the project in terms of what, what needs to occur, um, some of the first steps that we've done were um, uh, removing the median from the center of the roadway, which was done um, in 2020 um, throughout most of the 18 kilometer stretch. And what that does is allows for us to work on one side of the road and flip traffic to the other side while maintaining two lanes in each direction uh, wherever possible. Uh, and then that work um, is staged so that we can relocate, work on one side of the road to do the utility relocations, flip to the other side, do the other relocations on the other side, and then come down the center with the guideway work. So if it gives any indication, guideway work has already started in Mississauga North, um, where crews are actually in the center of the roadway um, uh, doing all the civil work and the, um, the, the system in order to uh, prepare for tracks to be to be laid uh, later on this year. So work is um, uh, for the project is is uh, proceeding at a at a good pace right now. Um, however, this is just the construction portion of the work. Uh, I believe our procurement and Metrolinx procurement might speak to some of the more specifics in terms of uh, what's to come uh, later on in the project in terms of opportunities. However, uh, uh, just to tie into another question I see into the chat. Um, actually, uh, actually, Rolf, I can yeah. just answer your question too. We are actually 44% complete at this oh, 44. point. Yeah, which, which, is, which is really uh, tracking extremely well. And uh, it, all things considering, especially the uh, COVID challenges that we had for a number of, uh, of, of two years, actually, of the project, as well as, uh, if you recall, there was the trucker strike uh, mm -hmm. over the last couple of months and a few things. So anyway, all in all, we're actually feeling very, very positive about that and, uh, and that um, we should be in pretty good shape to finish on the substantial completion date. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. And uh, I guess There's there was a sorry. Yeah, go ahead. More, John. One more question there, uh, Raul, and Jose is here. So if you could just maybe explain the question is, what do you mean by the thirty years? So you talked about the obviously there's the project time, and then there's a thirty year project. So if you could maybe just explain that, Raul, that would be great. Right. So uh, in broad strokes, the thirty years in as I mentioned before, it's a design, build, operate, finance, and maintain. Uh, DBFOM uh, contract, and it's it's a 30-year term. So that 30-year term includes the operation for, uh, portion of the project. So once all the construction is completed and the line is operational, that, that includes um, uh, uh, work in the operations, maintenance, and storage facility, as well as the operation of the light rail vehicles itself and the, the, the service itself in broad strokes. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks very much, Raul. 
Well, at this point, folks, it's my pleasure to welcome Jose Rodriguez, and he's with Mobile Inc's procurement, a senior buyer. So Jose was born in Peru and has been in Canada for about 15 years. He's an industrial engineer with an MBA and more than 10 years experience for procurement on large infrastructure projects. In addition to the 10 years in mining, including uh, working with some best-in-class companies such as Dragado, Saxiona, Amico, and WeBuild, this is Jose's second LRT project, and he's a senior buyer with Mobile Inks. So Jose, welcome, and over to you. I'm just trying to promote him to a panelist. Jose, I, or you should be seeing a, a button that it says join as panelist. And if that doesn't, there you go. Oh. Well, let me at least give you the ability to talk. All right. Welcome, Jose. You are on mute. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We're good. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, John. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the procurement function in the project. So basically, what we do in procurement is um, award um, contracts and purchase order to subcontractors and uh, suppliers. The way it works is our construction department. Uh, so there's two questions, what we need and who is going to provide it. Our construction department send, sends uh, a requisition, an internal requisition telling procurement us what they need. And then we run a process to determine who will do the job or who will provide the material, right? So our function is that to allocate, to, com to make commitments on behalf of the project. And only we can do that, right? So, so they, that's basically our function. And we do it in a structured way, following a procedure that is, um, um, it's a fair and transparent procedure. We start with a list of uh, companies that we want to invite for every need. And starting at that point, we run a tender process. The tender process is that uh, part of our commitment is that we provide all the companies the same opportunity to win, the same information at the same time. And uh, even when there's questions and answers to technical or commercial um, aspects of the tender package, we respond to everybody at the same time. So everybody, they all have the same information at the same time and they all send your quotations at the same, at the same day at the same time, right? And uh, what we intend with that is that um, we want everybody to know that we're not receiving your price and then calling someone else to tell him, okay, can you do better? No, all quotations are received at certain date, certain time, and that's it. No late quotations are accepted, right? So at that point, companies are expected to provide us their best possible price and delivery lead time. Um, next, please. So, Talking about our um, commitment, commitment with uh, the community, uh, you can see the numbers. Mobilink has procured approximately $807,000 with local businesses. And um, there's a list, right? And we are also looking for more companies um, from our community that want to work with us. Um, the next... Uh, the next slide shows a breakdown of uh, how we have uh, awarded, distributed these uh, awards, different sectors. So there's um, not a predominant uh, sector. And the next slide is going to show you um, services we're looking for. 
We have a lot of fencing to do still. Um, we have a supplier for office supplies, but um, we're open to have a, an alternative. Um, caterers for food and beverage. That's, we, we need that kind of services every day for um, the, the multiple meetings that we have. And obviously um, variety is welcome because people don't wanna be eating the same thing every day. Um, printing services for, especially for when we have a large amount of uh, drawings or documents to print, we outsource that. And of course, construction subcontractors. Um, it's a, one, a major sector in procurement that we hire a lot of uh, subcontracts to do portions of the work. And uh, yeah, we, uh, local uh, subcontractors are always uh, welcome. Next, please. So this is how we run our internal process. As I mentioned, the first step is a request for quotation or RFQ. And uh, that's when we go to the market with an exact specification telling suppliers or subcontractors, give me a price for this. I'm giving you the specification, give me a price for this. A request for proposal is when we tell the market I'm not giving you a specification. I need this result. I need this outcome. Propose something to me. We're not giving you the spec. You are telling me this is my solution. It costs this much. And a request for information is <clears throat> when we ask suppliers or subcontractors for information, but not because we're going to purchase something. It's just because we need help with ideas or budgetary price. And this is very important because we don't like, um, as part of our, our code of conduct, we don't want suppliers to invest time quoting for something we're not gonna buy. We right from the start tell them, this is an RFI. We just need a budgetary number, a ballpark figure for this work, for this fabrication, right? So these are the three kinds, the three types of tenders that we have. And uh, any company that works or intends to work with you will be invited probably with an RFQ, RFP, or RFI. Next, please. So for companies that are interested in working with us, um, there's a form in the website, in the Mobilinx website, uh, under opportunities, you will find a PDF and an email address where you can send your information. And then when we are looking for the kind of uh, service or product that you offer, um, we will contact you to, depending on, the, of, depending on the value of the package we're working on, um, the, there will be more or less documents we, you will be required to, to provide. If it's a, multi-million dollar contract obviously we want to see more about you before we we start talking about doing business but if it's a small order then the process is simpler the pre-qualification is simpler and uh, of course we invite um, vendors to constantly visit our website for updates and also, why not uh, giving us a call directly? Um, because sometimes the form, like it's a very simple document, but if we like if we see that the information you send uh, is very interesting, we will ask you for more, you know, just to have it handy, maybe a brochure or something. But basically, to, the first step is the form on the website. Next. Any question? We did actually have one question in the chat, uh, Jose, and that is what kind of office supplies are you looking for and where could we find the specs? So probably the latter half of the question might be uh, a little bit easier, but maybe you could respond to that for us. 
Yes. Um, <clears throat> so that question is um, related to the question what, right? So that would be to the requiring area to respond. So to the person that asked, please send me an email. I'm gonna put you in contact with our office manager. She knows exactly, she has the list of office supplies that we procure, that we order. Excellent. So thanks. Uh, I think Andrea is typing an answer in there. So that's wonderful. And uh, we'll get you that uh, email address, but thank you for that question. Are there any other questions for Jose? Again, you can, uh, in the reactions, you can drop a name or you drop, you can raise your hand or you can uh, answer a question, type a question here into the Q&A. We do have another question from Jimmy. And uh, Jimmy is asking, do you publish your tenders in a website, Jose? No, we like don't publish. Municipal governments do. Or is, there, is there a website on the uh, MobileLink site or anywhere that they could access? No, we don't. We, that's why we have, when we prepare our business list, um, we rely on different sources, past experiences. We have a database. And we have co companies that approach us and like using this form, if you fill the form, you will be added to our list. And obviously when we cannot find what we're looking for, that is rare, but we go in the internet and look for companies. And uh, I just had a meeting yesterday with a supplier, a subcontractor. They do something that it was very hard for us to find and we didn't know them, right? So. And I look in the internet. So that's when your um, SEO strategy in Google comes, uh, is, it becomes important, right? Because they could do something that we couldn't find that many alternatives, but they, they were not ranking on Google. They never contacted us previously and they were not on any business list that we had. Excellent. So Again, the first step is a form. Perfect. So if they did want to get on that list, they could uh, request to get on the bidders list. Is that accurate, Jimmy? Or is there, sorry, is that accurate, Jose? No, but it, the first, to get on the bidders list, they need to receive an invitation from us. Okay. So to receive an invitation, it's good that we have them on our suppliers list, on our database. That's why they need to fill the form. Okay, but filling the form gets them on the supplier. Get them on the supplier list. And also, you know, um, when they send information by email, the good thing is that we share with all the buyers. They all know, we share it with construction. They all know because construction can send RFIs also, requests for information. And uh, each company has a different um, sales strategy. There's companies that call every three months to check if there's anything new. There's companies that uh, um, never call, but Everybody knows them, like, I don't know, Lafarge for concrete, they don't need to be calling. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, the typical business relationship that uh, they are gonna try to get business, but we are gonna have them in mind because they will be on our list. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, folks, that's great. Um, there is one more question here about printing machines, Jose, and I know you do have to run, but uh, are you looking for any pr printing machines or printing we, services? We, in terms of machines for the office, I think we're covered. But when we outsource printing, let's say we have, we need to print five copies of a 2000 page document. We will outsource that to a third party. And again, um, that's something that, uh, I don't know the, uh, the answer to the exactly what we're going to need, but that's something that I can get you in touch with the office uh, manager. And John, if you wanna share my email address, that's also an alternative. Uh, they, can, they can send PDF, they can send videos, they can send more information by email. Okay, uh, I think everyone's uh, gonna do that. All right, mm -hmm. that's great. Thank you so much, Jose. I know you've got to run, so thank you for your time. We really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, I have a meeting with uh, some companies that requested. So yeah, other than that, uh, I would be happy to stay. Thank you very much.
All right. Have a great day, Jose. You too.